praise God. We appreciate the time of worship. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready for the word this morning? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, how many love the Lord this morning? Amen, amen, hallelujah. You are God alone from before time began. Oh, let's sing a worship song before we get ready for the word this morning. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. Are you ready for God to speak to you this morning? Yeah. Amen, amen. That's what we come for. That's what we gathered here for together. To hear from the Lord. Amen. Let's lift our hands now. Amen. As we invite the presence of the Lord among us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Dear love this morning. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hear God alone. From before time began, and you are on your throne, and you are God alone. Well, and right now, oh, in the good times and bad, oh, you are on your throne, oh, and you are God alone. Well, you are God alone oh from before time began oh and you are on your throne and you are god alone and right now in the good times and bad oh and you are on your throne well you are god Before time began, well, you are on your throne, oh, and you are God, oh, and right now, and right now, hallelujah. Oh, let us worship the Lord right now, give them praises, people. God, we thank you for your presence and your divine love this morning, Lord. We pray that you would come down in a special way and minister to your people and be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. We have a prayer request here for Sister Nairo who has a virus. Father, we pray that you would touch Sister Nairo right now and heal her and any person need a special touch from you. God, may virtue power go out to them. God, this is a Sandra, Lord. God, oh God, but a Michael McMeo, Father Jesus, and visit him in a special way and touch him. And they're all the sick in our midst, Lord. May you heal them all in the name of Jesus. We love you and we worship you and we adore you. We thank you for your mercy and grace. Amen. Oh, yeah, I am to worship. Turn around and greet somebody in Jesus' name. Turn around and greet your neighbor in Jesus' name. Praise the 
heaven this morning. Oh, praise God. You appreciate the special. Thank you, Sister Genevieve, for that special. Be still. Know that I am God. Amen. So this morning, we want to go straight into the Word. We want to go into Revelation chapter 5. We want to read from verse 1 to 9. And Revelation chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. Thank you so much for this tremendous atmosphere that we feel in the building this morning. Oh, praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right of him that sat on the throne a book written within on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a loud angel, strong angel, proclaim with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the four and the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. He came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Revelation chapter 8, reading verse 1 to 5. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about a space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer, filled it with fire of the altar, cast it unto the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray that you would take me out of the way. God may the Holy Spirit come in a special way. And Lord, bless those that are here. Bless those that are connected to us tonight over the internet. And those who would listen to the tape. Father, may not just be a viewing, but may there be a flow of the Holy Spirit that would minister to all those everywhere. Granted, Father, may the anointing call upon the word. and May you get glory and honor in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen, amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And as you sit down, just give God some praise and some worship and some thanksgiving. We feel we're in a special season. We feel we're in a special time. We feel we are transitioning into something powerful. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. No, right now, the president elect is Donald Trump in America. He's not yet on the throne. He's titled President Elect. But he's destined to sit on that throne. And the bride is the bride elect lady. She's not on that throne yet. But that is where she is heading. And right now, there's a transition taking place to put you in a position of power. God has to actually set you up, set your mind up, set the things around you up in order that you could take up your place yeah. hallelujah don't just take up a place like that you have to be prepared for it yeah. you have to transition into it yeah. from the ministry of the word yeah. to the ministry of the spirit yeah. from now faith is 
to the supernatural manifestation of all what God promised. Because wherever God is, there is supernatural. Shout supernatural this morning. Shout it out again, supernatural. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wherever God is, there is supernatural. He's a healer this morning. He's a deliverer this morning. He's a way maker this morning. When your back is against the wall and it seems like there is no way out, he could remove mountains this morning. Oh yes, that's the God we serve. We serve a living one. Not a dead one, a living one. That could take care of your problem. That could operate on you in your spirit, in your body and your soul. So I have a title this morning, The Breaking of Heaven's Silence. And I have an inspiration, The Prayer of the Saints. That's my inspiration. The Prayer of the Saints. Not the Prayer of the Bishop. Not the Prayer of the Pope. Not the Prayer of the Fivefold. Hallelujah! But the Prayer of the Saints. There is power. In the prayer, that's what the devil don't want you to know. Did you hear what I said this morning? Did, did you get that this morning? There is power in your prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, give the Lord a shout in the house. And there's a vial. Hallelujah. You want to fill up that vial. You want to fill that, that jar, that prayer jar. You want to fill it up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't be worried because nothing happening. Is that that vial in the visit right now? That vial empty and so forth, but you got to keep pouring. Keep pouring on it. One day it's going to be filled up. And the angel going to take it and pour it upon the earth. Praise God. I've heard. Ah, I've heard the cries of my people. I heard, I heard the groaning. That they want the Holy Ghost. I heard the groaning. That they want the healing. I heard the groaning. That they want a breakthrough. You got to be groaning. Not complaining, groaning. Not fed up, groaning. Not giving up, groaning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you groan and not complain, you are saying, Satan, you are a liar. My God is an awesome God. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I will be delivered. Yeah. Hallelujah. I may be not delivered yet, but I will be. Because he's going to break that silence. Come on now, come on now. When you talk to God and call upon God and he doesn't answer, that's the very hour to be certain of God to be certain he made a promise to be certain he'll confirm his word to be certain he will back it up with power to be certain he will back it up with signs wonders and miracles we are transitioning this morning oh hallelujah praise God you may be seated have a context scripture you can find if you want it's from Joshua chapter 6 Want to read that scripture? Now Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel, none went out, none came in. That's a tight ship. Shut up. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho. It's shut up. Nobody coming in, nobody going out. And God says, See, I give it to you. They bind it up. They block it up. They, they, they put a gate around it. They put walls around it. But I have given it. You can't miss it. Because the wall is big around it. You can't miss it. Because the tallest thing around. And it can't move. They ain't going nowhere. You're going to lose them. And you're going to set them free. Yeah. Let's read on now. The Lord said, See, I've given unto thine hand Jericho and the king thereof, and 
and the mighty men of valor. Ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war. Go around the city once, thus shall thou do six days. Seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram horns. And the seventh day he shall come past the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the song of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So God lay out the end from the beginning. He gave the description of the order of how it's supposed to be. He described the end game, which is the city walls to fall flat. But there are fine prints to that whole plan that God gave. You can't run out and get excited and just do your own thing. You have to wait for further instructions. The city has already been given. Your family has already been given. Forget what your eyes see. Everybody should be screaming now. You are not going with your five senses. Your senses are lying. Say amen. Say amen. Your senses are lying. You are not the believer. The believer is the word in you. Let me just get cracking here. Our righteousness is filthy rags. You see your best foot forward? You praying and you seeking the Lord and so on? Filthy rags. That's what you do. You pray, you pray that you you can't even approach God holiness with that. So God will even hear you Yes, you is because of blood over you. He hears your prayer. And when your prayer comes to that blood, it smells sweet. Like incense. Not just your voice. But when it comes through the perfume of that rose of Sharon, of that lily of the valley. My God, when a man of God prays, when the saints of God pray under that blood, those devils tremble because you have got to know there is power, not your prayer, but power in the blood. And when your prayer busts through that blood, my God, the gates of heaven have to open up and I feel this morning something going to break. Something gonna take place right in this place, right in this building, right among you. Don't bother with what the senses declare. Uh, you may be seated. Uh, our father Abraham demonstrated a life of faith that was astonishing, that is shocking. God spoke to him about he and his wife. God never told Sarah anything. He said, you're gonna have a son, and his name gonna be Isaac, isn't that right? Through this old woman named Sarah, never had a child, and past childbearing time. And Abraham had to believe for himself, and believe for his wife, who God never spoke to, who had horrors and fight and mind battles, and she have a right to have that, because she never got a revelation of what Abraham had. If she was in the spiritual and super spiritual, not super religious behavior, she might have walked out on Abraham Amen. until he half crack. But you see, the faith of Abraham does make you act funny. Amen. It does make you act contrary to other people thinking. 
It make an old man believe that his, he's going to have a child. It make an old man believe his old woman wife going to have a child. And he staggered not. When his back hurt him, he was a staggering a little bit. When he had to hold the stick, he was rock a little bit. That wasn't the problem. He had a cough, he had this, he had pain, he had fever. That's not the problem. But what God said, don't mess with that. Don't play with that. What God said, don't deny that. Just say, God said so. Come on, let the Lord give the Lord a shout. Don't fool with that. Listen, God took them out of Egypt. That wasn't a problem. Feed them in the wilderness, they complain. That wasn't a problem. They want meat. They tired of light bread. That's not a problem. He sent meat for them. They want drink. Water from the rock. Whatever they want. God struggled through with them because he knows that's not the promise. The journey is not the promise. So all you're fed up and you're tired, you're on your journey. But when they came to Canaan's Bania, and God trying to say, but listen, friends, I'm about to show you what the fulfillment is, what the end game is. Don't doubt now. I want to bring evidence back. I want to send men, spies, to bring back evidence of a reality that this is more than quotes and books and tapes and scripture reading. There is a land beyond the river. There's a supernatural power. There's a power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils, to speak in new tongues. There's a power like you have never seen before that is coming to the church now. Hallelujah. I want you to believe in that power. Don't just come to church to sit on bench. Come to church to create an atmosphere. To make a church that's going to make a revival. Even a seven thunder revival. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Verse 6 of that scripture. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests, said unto them, fine print, take up the ark of the covenant. Let the seven priests bear seven trumpets of our homes before the ark of the Lord. He said unto the people, pass on, come past the city. Let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua spoke unto the people, seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram horns passed on before the lord and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the lord followed them and the armed men went before the priests and blew the trumpets and reward came after the ark the priest going on blowing the trumpets here this part and joshua had commanded the people saying ye shall not shout or make any noise with your voice neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day i bid you to shout then shall you shout so amidst the whole plan joshua introduced a, a time of silence silence does mean nothing happening silence doesn't mean that there's just nothing in effect no silence is waiting for the appointed time to execute God's plan and purpose. So Joshua said, when I bid it to shout, then shout. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God, praise God. And it came to pass on the seventh day, when they arose early about the dawn of the day, and compass the city seven times only on that day and the compass the city seven times came to pass on the seventh time when the police bore the trumpets just as the people shout for the lord had given you the city Hallelujah. praise god that's before the city fall before the walls fell they had to shout because the lord gave the city you're not waiting for the walls to fall to shout you have to shout before your walls
That's faith. When you could shout before your eyes pop open. When you could shout before your crippled part of your body get loosed. When you could praise God. Hallelujah. After 25 years believing God. When you could give God a praise offering. My God. Like, that, like, like the devil say that. I, you, he, he is out of your hands now. Because you reconnect to the sense you had before the fall. You see right now you, you born in six, six, six uh, you born in, in sin and, and shape iniquity and connect the five senses. But when you see you reconnect to the sixth sense of faith that you had before the fall, that, then you come like an invi invincible man. You, you come like a superman. Praise be to Jesus. Oh glory to God and the devil didn't want you to understand that God promised in the last day some supermen. Not men with no S mark on the chest. Not that kind of superman. That's Hollywood. That's, that's comic strip business. We're talking about real supermen. Like Daniel was a superman. Praise God. Abraham was a superman. Praise God. Them two evil boys, they were supermen. Yes, yes, yes. Daniel, the lion couldn't eat him. Fire couldn't burn them fellas. Them guys was different altogether. They had a different kind of DNA. They had a different kind of gene. Their gene come from God. It always came from God. They were not just men of the earth. They came from God. They're going back to God. And God promised in the last days for the manifestation of the sons of God. When real sons, born sons, filled sons, anointed sons speak. And the word is created just like that. My God preaching the gospel in power. You're going to see it right here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to see it. The word preaching its power. The clarity of the gospel. The word being made plain. No more questions. No more unbelief. No more doubts. The prayers of the saints. You're going to understand it. And when you get a revelation that heaven is waiting on your prayers. Heaven is waiting on your prayer. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. You may be seated. My, why you think conditions come? To drive it to your knees. Why you think conditions come? To get you desperate. Sometimes we have it too easy. Have need of nothing. You have a good job. You have this, you have that. But there is no burden of good. No wonder John wept. John had the Holy Ghost. But when he saw no man was worthy, John began to weep. Because he knew this is critical. Somebody got to take it. Somebody got to pull it. Somebody got to rip it up. One sat on the throne. Mighty angel said, who is worthy? Who is worthy? Somebody got to be worthy. Because we have to come back on the earth. Oh, give the Lord some shouts in the house. This, this book, this mysterious book with, with, with names on it, sealed. Oh, hallelujah. You, 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 you can't even look on it. You, you can't even take it. No bishop. Think about the biggest bishop you know. No pope. No, no pope Boniface. Whoever face. No bishop. No archbishop could, could, could even look on the book. All of a sudden the lamb. Let, let's change the scene now. So Jesus didn't just come to die for our sins. No, when you look deeper, Jesus came to get this book. That he could drop it on the earth. To produce more sons like him. Oh, do you get that this morning? Oh, no, you are not just no old sinner hanging around looking for the grace of God. That's not you. Listen, you may be seated. If Adam didn't fall, you never was me born in sin to begin with. No adultery, no fornication, no loss, no backsliding, no whatever filth, whatever in your life. None of that. If Adam didn't fall, and God said, not you said, God said, I will restore. It has nothing to do with you. God said that. I will bring back a second Adam. A 
Asa Kaniv. And if Jesus is the second Adam, question, where is Madam Eve? Oh, I feel, I feel this bride go be one beautiful, glorious, anointed, rainbow colored. My God, you talk about a bride for Jesus Christ. forgive me if I dance a little bit if I walk a little bit you have to forgive me but I feel like John I feel I'm in the spirit yeah I feel I'm in the spirit oh hallelujah oh it's something to be in the spirit hallelujah you can't work it up but you're in it then ride it jump in it swim in it rejoice in it Forget your past, forget your failures, forget your sins, forget that. Let the blood splash on you this morning. The blood of Jesus, for thou hast redeemed us by thy blood. Every government in this world belongs to Lucifer. Everyone. That is why the government will have no choice but to come after the elect. But the Branham said, Daniel, Shadrach, Bishop, and Benigo, they were loyal people. They were qualified people they were honorable people and still things work against them you cannot escape you will not escape your testimony is important to god oh hallelujah praise god when the brahman said when the church finds his brotherly love when the church finds his holy to say well brotherly love no big sign but they could laugh people laughing yes. i ain't seen nothing all right whole reason see i ain't seen nothing you see these are virtues and revelations you can't see you can't touch you can't handle but he said the bride will get their place in christ yes, sir. not place in the minister association not place in conventions no place in christ if you are placed in christ god could put you in china in australia God could lose you in a hell hole. You will still survive. Because you are not placed in the hell hole. You place in Christ. Paul was in prison. And when Paul was writing his letter, Paul wrote, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He was rejecting the prison he was in. He totally disannulled that. He canceled that out. He do like that prison did not exist. As far as he was concerned, he locked up already. You can't lock up a lock up man. You can't imprison a prison up man. He was already prison with chains of love. How you can tie that man up when you're already wrapped up in Christ Jesus? My God, how many feel free this morning? How many feel your power of God here this morning? There's power here to heal you. There's power here to deliver you. There is power here to set you free. From the seventh seal now remember this seventh seal is the end time of all things it's the end of the struggling world it's the end of struggling nature it's God's seal the plan of redemption how he bringing us back 
because you see in the beginning we wasn't supposed to be feeling getting old and getting sick and getting all these kind of pain and just going down to the dust the what dust shall return in the beginning was spirit man god make dust man put spirit man in dust man and that's what we have here right now so this is not me there's a house i'm living in god could have put you in any house any color house any country house but that doesn't stop it because thou hast redeemed us by thy blood out of every nation so God could have put you in a Chinese house and God had to find you. Amen. So your gene is known by God. Amen. That's why God had no fight with prostitutes, with homonger, with, with this, with, 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 with drunkards. God had no fight with that. Amen. What God looked at is what inside of here. Amen. Watch, watch. You may be seated. Watch, watch, watch. The testimony was this. This woman is caught we have a on the camera on video yes. all of them had a cell phone doing so in the very act of adultery moses say yes. stone her they bring the coats for jesus the coat into the, to the living coat moses said to stone her yes. and jesus said okay no problem i'm not fighting with moses anymore. it's not it's not I am not having no debate with Moses and what Moses say, you know. My, my challenge is what in your heart? Yes. If what Moses say in your heart agreeing with like something else. So I will say it this way, which one are you without sin? Drop it on her. Bust the first stone on her. Give it to her. One by one all them big shots walk out. Because they know they're guilty as hell. Of all kind of things. Maybe not adultery. Maybe greed. Maybe, maybe envy, maybe jealousy, maybe hatred. Maybe the cursing the neighbor. Maybe the burning the neighbor house. You know what they do? Take the, take the neighbor ox. When Jesus faced that woman, he said, woman, where are thine accusers? She said, there is none. She said, neither do I condemn thee. Not, neither Jesus condemn her. So Jesus was on point. In person. They say, woman, I'm not even in that, you know. I come to let you know there's a higher order. There's a higher life that you could connect to. Woman, I'm going to free you. Go and sin no more. And I was, devil, lose her, let her go. Come on now, and I believe inside of here this morning, somebody going to go loose. Somebody going to go free. Yeah, you don't have to live that life no more. God could empower you. Could somebody say amen on that? Amen. You don't have to go back and do what you were doing. God can empower you. Amen. Power from on high. Amen. Glory. Amen. The seventh seal. It's like find a rocket into the air. Rocket explodes and there goes up and explodes again. You put out five stars. Out of those stars explode. Put out five more stars. Then one of them starts explode. And break forth five more stars. And that's what the seventh seal. It ends the time of the world. It ends the time for this. It ends the time for that. It ends the time for everything is ended up on that seventh seal. The breaking of the seal was so great that heaven was hushed by silence for the space of half an hour. Half an hour was fixed. No man could change it. It's only for a space of half an hour. Half an hour of silence. God's silence. Heaven's silence. But underneath that silence, he's redeeming a people by his blood, by his word. Redemption present tense. He himself came down in 1 Thessalonians 4. Scripture said the Lord himself descends from heaven with a shout. With a shout. Hallelujah. And with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The Lord himself. He had, he had to trust no other angel to come to get this bride he came down in revelation 10 and seven thunders show its voices out oh glory to god seven thunders show its voices out it's not going to catch the snakes it's not going to catch the crabs it's going to catch the rainbow trout it's going to catch the elect lady therefore the seven thunders is only for the bride it's an exclusive bride promise Oh, glory to God and the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
he wrote it out Amen. oh hallelujah do you believe that Amen. oh praise the name of the lord no singing no praises no altar nothing silence deadly silence in heaven for half an hour all the hosts of heaven was silent when the seven seal mystery in the book of redemption was broken think of it but it's broke oh hallelujah who could say it wasn't broke it broke but it was silent hallelujah for half an hour what you gonna think when that happened what that silence is broken oh hallelujah oh my heaven going back with noise man because heaven is full of worship you know only that's why half an hour was fixed only half an hour heaven can only hold that back for half an hour after half an hour it's back to worship it's back to shouts because shout because the lord has given you the city after half an hour is a year of jubilee after half an hour you're going back to your family you're going back to your prayer life you're going back to inheritance you're going back to that anointing that makes you a super church a super race a super people on the earth i am convinced that there's a super race on the earth all this racist nonsense is only impersonating a true elect race that god put on the earth with the dna of god hallelujah makes you not superior but make you to be like god a god man on the earth Jesus you may be seated that super gene make you transcend natural and supernatural look at Jesus going to a wedding and wine ran out and they say master the wine ran out he said what I have to do with that what I have to do with that I'm a guest like everybody else but then he had instructions whatever he said do it because his word not normal he does speak by faith and walk by faith his word could create things just like that so don't fool with what he said whatever he said just do it he said take some bottles and just draw it draw the water out of it listen you're pouring water and you're pouring out wine you're full in water and pouring out wine you're full in water and pouring out wine don't let the water fool you you're gonna pour out wine oh, oh, oh my god hallelujah you know what wine is wine is stimulation of revelation wine is what make you stand up wine is what make you shout wine is what make you ball hallelujah wine make you act crazy it's being revealed to you by your father flesh and blood hath not revealed it And that's the problem lacking people lack revelation know the bible is true and god is true and god is true but not revelation but if you get revelation a different thing like that look at simeon old man it was revealed to him that he shall not see death to the lord christ cancer come flick out cancer so grim reaper come he said take, take a spin not yet as long as you see christ you can do nothing Grim Reaper gave me a wink eye, wink eye, say wink eye, how much eye you want to wink? Make a spin. You can't touch me, you could watch me. But until Messiah come, you can't do one thing. Because these eyes are anointed to see Messiah. What are you anointed for this morning? What are you anointed for this morning? Tell me, tell me, tell me, what are you anointed for this morning? every day he's coming to church old man who are you coming to church for i come to see christ old man we're giving you a rocking chair for retirement i still come to see christ old man we improving your bed home relax he said no one day one day every day under expectation because you have revelation he know he's not gonna die 
until he sees the Christ. And hear what David said, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chased me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. So don't complain. Stand up like a man. You're going to make it. Stand up like a man. You're going to break out. Stand up like a man. Come on, you royal seeds of Abraham. Don't stagger. Don't give up. Don't, don't ever think your praise means nothing because when John began to praise his prayer his praise was breaking dimensions Pray, praise, praise is something else prayer is something else you know prayer can start on earth and hit heaven and you don't even know when it hit heaven's door but when God hears it he just hears it you know I've heard I've heard the people are desperate. They really want a revival. They really want the Holy Ghost. They really want the supernatural to break amongst them. They are hungry for God. I feel it this morning. There's a thirst in the camp. I love it. Any preacher going to love this. I feel a deep calling to a deep. I feel your groaning in spirit. I feel your birth is about to come forth. When Zion travailed, Zion brought forth. Oh, glory to God, there's a travail in Zion. There's got to come a travail in Zion. You may be seated. The world worried because they don't know what the Donald will do. But that has nothing to do with what we have to do. What the Donald has to do, the Donald has to do. But what the bride have to do, the bride have to do. Oh, we have some, some heavy stuff this morning hallelujah praise god praise god hallelujah hallelujah and then he went further to say my as certain as i stand on the platform tonight i had the revelation that will reveal of that seventh seal it is in a threefold manner and i will speak to you of an of, of a fold of it he said what happened is that those seven thunders that he heard thunder and was forbidden to write what's the mystery laying those seven consecutive thunders rolling out Amen. oh hallelujah the mystery under the seven seal Amen. seven thunders yes, that the devil knows nothing about Amen. it was silent Amen. so he can't interpret it he have no revelation of it he don't understand it he can't connect with it so anytime i talk about thunders he's totally confused his cabeza can't handle that Amen. his spirit can't handle that Amen. hallelujah praise god but the bride could handle that because that restores her image and the likeness of God back into a bride. That is what makes her a super race and a super church and a super people. They're going to be amazed at the confidence that God put in your spirit and in your heart. But they're going to take note that you have been with Jesus. Because what Jesus did, you'll be doing the same thing too. These things Jesus began and continued to do. Hallelujah! If the first church wrote a book of Acts, a next church can write books. I will say it again. If the first church wrote a book of Acts, we can't be writing books Amen. and reading books. We have to write another book of Acts. Amen. Book of Acts means shaking off the snake in the fire. Yes, not going to the doctor and say, you go there, you go there like a snake bite me. No, no, no. Shake it off and the snake good as dead. He dead. Fire kill him. Shake it off. When the snake bites you, everybody looking for the dead, looking for you to give up, looking for the write off, writing you off. Before you, they're trying to write you off, they want to write you off, but God didn't write you off. God put your name down in the book. That's why the devil, he's exposed this morning. Don't believe you just ordained to get sick and die. Don't accept that. Don't accept that. Let God sign you off, not let the devil sign you off. Don't ever take what the devil tells you. You're sick, you can't make it. This can't break it. This door closed, that door closed. Well, you close the doors. But I can open any door you close. The only door that you can't open is with God that God shut. 
Don't let the devil shut no door for you. Let God open the door. He's a way maker. So, Brother Branham, I believe we are so close to the coming of the Lord Jesus. It behooves us to do all that we possibly can to bring every soul to the kingdom and to bring the kingdom to the people. Amen. That we might be healed of our spirit. And I believe that the body of Jesus is the sickest body I know of. The spiritual body of Christ on earth is very sick. Amen. So it's easy to talk about physical healing, but what about the healing of your soul? Amen. Of your mind, of your past, of your sins, to be released from your guilt. And you can't get out your own condemnation. And can't condemn none the rot you were in. How do you get out of it? How do you pull out of it? You cry and see my God not hearing you. You cry, you call, you pray and see my God is silent. But God is not silent as if he's doing nothing. Amen. I believe in my heart that his response has to do with your response. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Praise God. That woman told us that if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She pressed away and she was made whole. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. One time a baby, but Abraham was prayed that the baby was raised from the dead. Next woman, she heard about that baby race and her death. Her baby was dead. And she went to the convention. She went to the meeting. And she pressed her way. She passed through her legs. She pushed, she pushed, she pushed. And Brother Branham tell somebody, go down and pray for her. She, do, he doesn't know who I, she doesn't know who I am. And eventually she pressed her way so much, her faith was pressing. It's not just her physical body pressing. Her faith is what was pushing her. Her faith went up to heaven. Her faith break that dimension of time and went into that higher dimension heaven dropped down a vision on brother branham saw the baby smiling and that woman who was at the back had to come to the front he said bring that baby to me and the baby was raised from the dead why because faith broke through and caught heaven's attention you see faith heaven must respond to faith must it's compulsory heaven cannot ignore faith Faith is like a racket in heaven. Hallelujah. Faith is a heavy noise that interrupts what, what's going on in heaven. Hallelujah. When them two evil boys say, our God is able to deliver us, but if he doesn't deliver us, we will not bow down. Listen, wormwood. Brahm said the, the, the angel in, the angel who handles water Hallelujah. wanted to go down Hallelujah. to out the fire. Yeah. The next angel wanted to do this. Next angel, everybody offering the, the assistance. God said, no, this is too much. I go down myself. He was the fourth man in the fire. Yeah. Listen, that faith was so powerful, he joined them yeah. in the fire. Yeah. Fire can't burn them. Yeah. They say we put down three, but we see in four. Yeah. That's the supernatural. Yeah. That's the supernatural. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Sometimes your husband fire, wife fire, children fire, family fire, money fire, all kind of fire trying to burn you up. But Lord have mercy. I see another one in the fire. Praise God more, more, more than you. Bigger than you. Something lifting you up. Something raising you up. You, you couldn't lift yourself up. No, but something, somebody greater than you lift you up. Oh, give the Lord some praises, people. That's what you're here to do. You're here to worship him. When it's song good, give a shout. When it's song great, just give a God a praise offering. When something strikes your soul, say hallelujah. And you are bringing the angels closer to you. And as your praises go up, his glory will come down upon your life. Atmosphere. Right now, angels descending. Right now, right now. Glory to God, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, amen. Praise God. So there's a vast difference between a Christian and a Holy Ghost filled Christian. Isn't that right? The first place is a Christian professing to be a Christian. But if this Christian has not yet been filled with the Holy Ghost, he's only in the process of being a Christian. He is professed to believe it. He is working to it. But God has not given him the spirit of the Holy Ghost. He has not yet reached that goal with God that God recognized it. And Abraham found, Abraham was faithful to the promise that God gave him that he will have a child. And God, here we go, confirmed his faith by giving him a sign a sign of circumcision which is a type of the holy spirit Amen. he said you talk to me 
you let me talk to a man two minutes i could tell you whether he received the holy ghost or not you so can you it separates them it's a mark you are so different when the holy spirit comes on you until the mind of this world don't like you they're against you they want nothing to do with you at all you are born of another world listen you are just as much alien listen 10 times more alien you'll be if you go to the farthest flung regions of african jungle you're 10 times more alien than that you are different when the holy spirit comes it's a mark among the people so you are an alien you from outer space before there was a moon before there was a star before there was a molecule you from back there so you belong to a higher order you belong to a god class i see some of you looking you're looking like you wonder if this thing is really true you know some of you watching me with unbelief you're looking at me like sarah but i still believe for you outer space aliens higher order god class different people all together look at peter curse deny christ run cry hiding himself but when the holy ghost came upon the seed here we go that was in peter and changed him all of a sudden that cuss bud that man who cursed and swear and they write off 50 days ago that man could say silver and gold i don't have because where i come from don't even need silver and gold and the power that i'm empowered with didn't come by silver or gold but what i have such as i have i give it unto you rise up and walk in the name of Jesus and I tell you rise out of your depression come out of your frustration in the name of Jesus receive your breakthrough you may be seated hallelujah glory because Jesus did not bypass his theophany because Jesus came from thought to word to flesh he knew all things so he knew he belonged to that God class higher class Superman hallelujah God himself word made flesh so he had to let the brothers know they come from that same class too but he couldn't reveal it to them he had to come back from the father the spirit so he said I will not leave you comfortless I'm going to come to you. Little while the world see at me no more. But you are going to see me. Because I'm going to be with you. Even in you. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. To introduce this God class. You may be seated. He began to do some works. And when it brought astonishment to disciples. He said, don't worry. The same works I do shall you do also because you don't know it yet but at that day you want to know i am in the father you are in me and i am in you you belong to that same god class oh help me jesus and that's why the bible said if that same spirit raise Christ from the dead dwell in you it's going to quicken your mortal body if that same spirit oh help me preach somebody if that same spirit oh glory 
But the Bible said right now, he said, your theophany is near by you. And you're getting a charge from it. Yeah, 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 your own angel charging you, your theophany, anointing you. Like a charge going into a battery. You are being charged up this morning. You're going to be running devils. The Lord has given you the victory. Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. Let me be seated. Job had no Bible. Job had no service. He had no elders or some leaders. He just had inspiration. Job was under a test, not caused by himself. He didn't start it. He didn't invite it. He didn't ask God for it. It just came. Because God told the devil, there's a man on the earth. There's none like him. Have you considered him? Because I've got something in him that you cannot take out. Come on now and I say, I say today, there is something in you that that devil just can't take out. seated that's why that's why brother brown says god's love is not parental love you love your child love your child and my baby and whatnot that's not the kind of love god has his approval is in christ the beloved so he could put you in the lion's den that's love he could put you in fiery but that's love as long as you're in christ you're fine what shall separate me from the love of god that's in christ jesus shall trials testings tribulations this the reason why I sing this the reason that I shout because of him because of Christ hallelujah that's the reason I stand my God hallelujah there's power in the blood there is wonder working power in the blood what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no heart found i know nothing but the blood of jesus oh let's give him some worship intellectual will get a lot of fight with a service like this yes, too much atmosphere noise praise they have no problem with noise in carnival they have no problem with noise in fet they have no problem with noise in the football they have no problem with noise in uh, 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 cricket and all the stadium and all the sports they have no problem with no noise that noise this noise there's a problem because you're praising god you're praising who you can't see that's faith you're worshiping and you never see him that's faith. You're saying amen to a word that of he promised. That's faith. Amen. 
Listen, the prodigal son was prodigal son. He was always a son. He wasn't cousin. He wasn't distant nephew. He was the man's son. He's backslidden, but he's still a son. He have cuckoo friends, but he's still a son. In a contrary atmosphere, but he's still a son. Once a son, always a son. Take that devil! You may be seated. The father knows the son not stupid. He may be foolish. Don't ask me to distinguish the difference. Don't, don't try that. Man take his money and go on. Take his inheritance and go on. Spend it out. Run it out. Everything else. Wine, money, and woman and song. Until he end up eating pig food. Shame. Shame to write back home. You can't even use WhatsApp, text, nothing. You ain't talking to nobody. You have no money to put on his cell phone. Shame. You can't call nobody. All you have is the last good clothes. Nobody see where they go in pick pen. Every time you spot him, is the last clothes he have they go in pick pen. Until he decides to watch the pigs and say this. This doesn't make no sense. And I trust some of you come to that spot this morning. That you tell yourself your life, this doesn't make no sense. You're getting old. Where you wanna go? What the hell? This ain't make no sense. Yeah. Come on, the devil hell and at largest mouth. Yeah. Why you wanna go there? Yeah. And have a hell, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, hell is real, you know. Yeah. Just as heaven is real, hell is real, you know. Yeah. People don't talk about hell much, but hell is just as real. Yeah. Yeah. That son said, I will arise. Yeah. I will say to my father. All the excuse done. But people, they, they, they're like, excuse, excuse, not me, not me, not me, not me, she, she, everybody else but them. I will say, I will go, I'm going back. You should want to go back. Listen, your spirit, your spirit you born with, that's not the real you, you know. Oh, sit down, sit down a minute, let me, let me, let me just get down inside of here. You feel like the real you? Your real you is faith, virtue, knowledge. Let me go, let me go. That's your spirit, temper. Your hot temper, that is temporary. Your anger spells and you're getting upset and making this out, that, that's temporary. Jacob was a trickster. Jacob was a skullduggery guy. Every trick in the book, Jacob know and Jacob handling it well. You're tricking father, mother, brother, anybody. You could be family and all, he outsmarting everybody. That's Jacob. Smart man. But God let him run his run until God ready for him. The Bible said Jacob was caught alone. That's the problem with some of you. You're not alone yet. God ain't catching the corner yet. You have plenty of friends and people could talk and keep in a different kind of atmosphere. But God caught him alone. No wife, no children. He alone now. And he know he have his brother to face. And his brother want to take his truth. And Jacob frightened. Because when you come to natural now, we brother blessed and multiplying and everything else just like he. So he can't say, brother, you know, you need, you need any help? The person said, no. You need money? No, I have already. You need a car house? I have that too. I want to deal with you. Okay, brother. So Jacob trembling. Jacob had a call to get a call in heaven upstairs. Jacob said, Lord, I can't handle this. This is pressure. I want you to intervene. I'm your son Jacob. The one who got the birth right. He started to claim I have a right to have access to you. You can't deny me. I will not be denied. So angels got dispatched to minister to a son who need help. A help call on the line. SOS on the line. Hallelujah. Calling help desk. Calling technical support. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Angel come down and Jacob holding on to the angel. Now this is where the thing get deep now. What in that man could hold on to the angel? You see he said some words that was dangerous. He said I will not 
let you go till you bless me. I will not. No, you have to be serious, you know. And you can't be jumpy, jumpy, you know, because soon you see it, and you, boom. You faint and you out and no blessing. No, we're not talking about that. Yeah, I will not let you go till you bless me. And a battle started. This not, not, not the devil and his angel, you know. This is Jacob and the angel. Because he said, not the angel said anything. Jacob is the one who spoke. He said, you're not leaving here. If we had to go down all night long. If we had to hang in there. If we had to pray all night long. If we had to seek you all night long. My God, I need some power. I need to be changed. I need a new walk. How many feel that way this morning? I need a new talk. When Jacob finish, angel say, it's coming day. I have to go. Jacob said, bless me now. Then you can go if you want. Angel touch him. I like that. A man locked down the angel and said, bless me. And when he get the blessing, so he started to walk a little bit on a limb. Now he was ready. Wait, watch, watch the difference. He can face anything now. He can face, he can, the brothers could multiply in front of him. He, he died nothing. Because he met the angel. When you meet God, man just... What is man? God could blow man away. When you meet God, what does that do with man and human? You say so much a human for the last 50 years. Human, but when you meet God, it's a different thing. Here comes Jacob, he's changed now. He has a new name. He knows his name has changed. God revealed that to him. You shall no longer be Jacob. You will be Israel. Oh, hallelujah. And he's going to have 12 sons. And that's where you get the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's where you get Israel as a people. Because a man wrestled with God. Amen. Got a name change. A nation is born. Twelve tribes. Ephraim, Judah, Gad, Hallelujah, Reuben. All the different tribes. Twelve tribes of Israel. Isn't that wonderful? How that came about? A man wrestled with God. How you will tell that man what he did under Jacob anointing? But Jacob, you do so and so. Hello. Israel, Amen. talk to me. Amen. God class, Amen. higher class. Amen. Don't pin me down to Jacob. Amen. Not when the higher class has been activated in me. Amen. You not hear what I'm saying? Amen. Did you get that? Amen. When God activate the higher call, Amen. the God call Amen. in your spirit, Amen. in your heart, Amen. it has nothing to do with what back here. Listen, do you understand how clear Moses could go back to Egypt when he ran 40 years? When he met the pillar of fire, you see how easy it was for Moses to go back without even studying whether they have a writ out for him, warrant, arrest for murdering a man. He had nothing to do with that. The higher calling was activated in Moses. So God tell Moses, you be God, Aaron will be your prophet. A man who kill a man and run away, come back and play in God. Acting on God's behalf. Yes, yes. So when Moses already said, let there be flies and flies pelting out. Yes. Just like God, let there be light. Yes, yes. Let there be frogs and frogs coming out. Yes. Coming out of his mouth. Yes. Because he's a higher class. Yes. He's a God class. Yes. Look, Moses, God gave him a return ticket to bring the people to this mountain. He said, look the ticket here. You're going and you're coming back. Yes. Guaranteed. Yes. And when he bring them out, the Red Sea in front of them. Yes. Mountains on both sides. And Pharaoh changed his mind. I said to come after them. And some of them unbelieving brethren. Always, always brethren. Who missing Egypt. Missing the styles. I had to complain about. Hey, Moses, bring us to the dead. Look, Pharaoh coming behind us. And you know what carrying already. And when people say they're carrying a negative, it brings a spirit. It brings an atmosphere. It brings an influence upon you. That is why be careful who your friends are. Be careful who what they're speaking. They could speak negative and create an atmosphere and negative around you. Moses get caught up in that and begin to go on a rock and begin to cry. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Help me, Jesus. Brown said, go on to kick him. God said, why cry unto me? Speak and move forward. 
You know what? Don't go back to that lower class. Stay in the God class. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Stretch forth a rod. My God, look the power coming up, open up the Red Sea. And the people seeing dry ground because the same man that was crying was the same man that come back speaking. Speak. Do I hear them sons saying amen here? Don't let the tears fool you. You may be seated. Jesus. Jesus, he at the tomb of Lazarus. He cried. He wept. But look at them tears fool you. That was, that, was, that was before. But when he got activated, even now, whatever you are, shall be. I am the resurrection and life. And he's had to anoint some promises that, that never came out before. Nobody ever pulled that out of the book before. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Believest thou this? Where have he laid him? That's the God class. That's the different level coming out now. That's the anointing of God creating such an atmosphere to make the Son of God speak. Lazarus, come forth. Oh my, come on you daughters. Come on you daughters of Zion. Come on you sons of God. You belong to a different class, a higher class. Oh glory to God. Praise be to Jesus. That God class made Jesus take five loaves and two fishes and pray, bless it and multiply it. That's what we're talking about. Oh glory to God, how that, that God class Peter fish all night and caught nothing. That God class tell them, go and cast the net on the right side. Fish gonna be there, power gonna be there, your blessing gonna be there. I know you work there all night long, but this is a word from the Lord. Amen. Present tense. Amen. Things hasn't worked out all night long. The fishing all night long. And Jesus walked up and said, cast your net to the right side. And they just did it. And they had to ask for help to collect the fish that was there. My, you talk about a life of faith? A life of power? Oh, glory to God. I don't know. We had to kind of close off somewhere here. But somewhere in the service. But listen to this. You will be seated. Peter was in prison. And the saints were praying for Peter. They were covering Peter with their prayer. Asking for Peter deliverance. It was the prayers of the saints. It was going up to God. Your single prayer like a little note. Bing. Bong. Bong. But when it's come together. It makes a harmony. It strikes a chord. It plays a tune to God. And when the saints were praying. And prayer went up to God. On behalf of Peter. The gates open up. Because of the prayers of the saints. That's the power of the prayer of the saints. It could open up prison bars. Amen. What are you doing? You're sticking if you're not praying. Amen. You're holding back blessings. You're holding back powers. You're holding back the anointing. You're not praying. Not praying. Don't wait for somebody to pray for you. You pray for somebody. Amen. Get a burden. See somebody pray. Get a breakthrough. Because you are praying. Sometimes God is a wake up, but around to pray for this one and pray for that one. And that's the prayer that God using to respond to different things. Oh, hallelujah. And to show you something, Peter come at the door. Somebody peep and ball. It's Peter. They said, No, it's his angel. Pray answered, and they didn't even they, 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 they even they're not even ready to believe that the prayer being answered. They praying for Peter to become out of prison. Peter's out of prison now. And they said, No, it's his angel. Peter, go on. I'm gonna be too often you or something. Hallelujah. God answered the prayer. The prayer in front of the door. Free. Oh, they should be expecting it. But they said no. Oh, hallelujah. Could you take some more? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise his wonderful name. So the Holy Spirit is your assurance, is your protection, is your witness, is your seal, is your sign. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now he doesn't deal with the church as a group of people. He deals with the church as individuals, each individual in the church. And now it's got to a time, it's no secret. Here we go. We all see it. When a man proves and God loves him, he takes him out somewhere to himself. And there in the front of angel, he does something for him. He lifts him up 
and there in the presence of God gives him and fills him and sets him out that's the age we are living in let God take in his sons and daughters and blessing them and you can't do nothing about it it's just God's hand upon that person's life the same Holy Spirit that saved the Lutherans sanctified the Methodists baptized the Pentecostal is now setting in order the coming of the Lord Jesus when it will be so powerful that body will come into this group of church will draw the rest of them from the grave that and there'll be a resurrection that is what the Holy Ghost was given for Amen. it wasn't given for just to say we have the Holy Ghost it was given for a purpose to bring perfection to bring on the resurrection Hallelujah. that is what God released his spirit for what is the Holy Ghost without us they can't be made perfect they live in one day under that we live in another day when the enemy come like a flood the Spirit of God raises a standard against it. The Spirit of God raises a standard. What is it? He is pouring in the Spirit. Then those who are resting in the grave under the altar saying, crying, how long, Lord? How long? How much longer? God is waiting on me and you. The church is waiting on me and you. Adoption time when God can pour into us his fullness, his power, his resurrection. Here we go. And when the church and Christ become so close till Christ becomes visible among us, and raises the dead so it's not you raising the dead it's christ coming visible among us and raising the dead Amen. hallelujah because christ does all three the shout the voice and the trump christ among god people so we creating a tabernacle a house a dwelling place for him to come in step into it we become the capstone bride the magnet bride for christ to step into it to pull up the grave all the rest from the grave oh hallelujah oh praise so as long as god got a people god got a bunch a church god got a holy ghost matching with it and god give the holy ghost intellectuals that rise always have but god got a minority somewhere he's got a church that will move right on with the baptism of the holy ghost and claiming the light your testimony today will bring judgment against the city our testimony of the baptism of the holy ghost and the power of god a holy life will bring judgment against the city Amen. what do you need the holy ghost for what is for is to give you power of prayer power of speech power for a holy life that is what the holy ghost is given for power of prayer power of speech power for a holy life isn't that right some people say i can't quit drinking i can't quit this the holy ghost comes to live in you to make all these can'ts get away from you all what you can't do the holy spirit will show you what you could do isn't that right it will make them man turn your head from them half naked women and quit lusting after them it will is to quit making you smoke and drink and be warned to be a big shot it will take that out of you it will humble you when you do that it will quit making you want to marry somebody else's wife that's what it is it will make you live a holy life you say i can't do it i just can't do it you can't you sure you can't but the holy ghost come for that purpose to take it to take it out of you take all the old habits and things that you're doing the old backbiting separating yourself saying bless god i'm a methodist i won't have nothing to do with them holy rollers the holy is coming to take it out of you come think about it now we are preaching holy ghost we are preaching fire we are preaching the power of god and people don't want to even interfere uh, associate with us that's crazy Amen. we going to heaven Amen. where them going Amen. think about it now hallelujah you're going to glory Amen. when the press begin to move you think the devil asking what church you belong to is the elect you know yeah. understand is the catholic and the protestants will get together to form the image unto the beast Amen. to form the union you have to belong to it Amen. can't buy or sell unless you take the mark of the beast Amen. so the electric will be completely different no compromise with the word Amen. god will not apologize to Solomon and gomorrah god didn't make adam and stevie make adam and eve Amen. no compromise whatsoever Amen. It's just the word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Presbyterian. I wouldn't go to that old Holy Roller bunch. The Holy Ghost come to take this touch out of you. Wash you in the blood. Here we go. It's to give unction to the preacher. Amen. So you have to see unction on the preacher. Virtue power upon the preacher. That's what the Holy Ghost is supposed to do. No, no dry intellectual lecture stuff. No unction come to the preacher power of speech power to preach power to teach power of prayer power to witness christ that is the purpose of the holy ghost unction to the preacher 
it's to give holiness to the group. There we go. It's to set the church in order. It's to bring the unity of the spirit. It's to unite us together with power. Not with convention and books and taste, with power. Power upon you, power upon me. We get united. Oh, glory to God. How many believe that? You inspired on your job. You inspired in school. You inspired when you go home. You anointed with God. Look, but mom was praying for a woman, uh, praying in the prayer line. A woman came up with a baby, and the testimony was something like this. He said, The baby, baby is already healed. The woman next to the woman, when she was sitting down, fell led to pray for that baby. And she prayed for that baby. Her prayer, God honored the prayer of that woman for that child. But Abraham said, God knew that woman had more compassion than him to pray for that child. So you see what God using? That you could step into somebody's shoes and feel their pain and then effectively minister to them in prayer and spirit. It's not a mechanical thing. It's a hard thing. You know how hard it was be for that woman caught in adultery? In the very act you know the shame and the embarrassment she must have felt by all these high priest looking men with all the long gong and whatnot and had the inside sin and her own was outside you know jesus must have felt dealing with that whole scenario he turned his back on them and right in the sun he gave them chance to leave one by one he knew they would leave because he dropped the picture on them and the mirror and said look at all yourself take a peek if you like where you see belt the big stone. When they looked so they couldn't handle what they're seeing. Amen. What's a mirror you put? Amen. Check yourself out first. Yes, sir. And they couldn't handle it. They walk away. Amen. So you could understand now the compassion that Jesus dealt with to deal with that woman. Hallelujah. To tell a woman, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. You could understand how he was reaching out to the woman at the well. Yes, you could understand how he go to blind Batimus. You could understand. And, and it's interesting. Because a blind man comes to him and Jesus asks, what will you want me to do for you? Amen. And the man blind like a bat. And you could see that. But he still wanted to come out your mouth. Amen. What do you want me to do for you? Amen. Lord, to receive my sight. Amen. That's what he wanted to hear. Amen. Be the whole. Go and see. Amen. Receive your sight. Amen. Receive your deliverance. Amen. Receive your breakthrough. Receive your healing. Receive your victory. Receive your comfort. Glory. Hallelujah. So the breastplate of Aaron, Aaron, called the human thumb had 12 stones, and Isaac shared it with you all. And anytime somebody got a dream or vision, they would bring it and speak it. The stones would look dormant, dead, nothing. But when you speak it, a supernatural light used to glow like a rainbow light to say that's God so that's how they knew the dream or the vision or the prophecy was of God Amen. if somebody speak it and nothing happen thumbs down and that one so but I'm saying here now if that supernatural light on the human tongue did not flash it was rejected because God was not in it I want you to hear listen any message regardless if it's from priest from preacher from prophet or anything else any man no matter how spiritual what his office is what he has done if he raised the dead if he healed the sick if he's the archbishop of canterbury if he's the pope of rome if he's the head of any denomination no matter how spiritual though he has spoke with tongues danced in the spirit though he preached the gospel no matter what he has done if his message doesn't come out of the Bible, it's wrong. Yeah. This is God's human thumb. Him. So the Aaron priesthood is done away with, but we still have a human thumb, which is the Bible. Amen. It has to flash. Isn't that right? He told a dream. Okay. Whatever he saw, the sacred light. Okay, I'll skip that down. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 
So it can't be one little quote here. It has to be line upon line. It has to be through the scriptures to bring out the whole picture. Isn't that right? Amen. Oh my, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost ought to be more important to you than everything else there is in the world. Your prestige, your life, your job, you anything that there is, you should not cease until you have it. You must receive it. It must be the most, you say, well, I'm afraid they at my work, I'm afraid at my husband. Don't be afraid. That be the first place, let everything else go. I expect to get it one of these days, Brother Branham. No, not one of these days, no. This is the time. Let it be first before you. Before I do everything else, let me have it now. Praise God, desperate. You get desperate, you really got to have it or die. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. That's what the Holy Ghost is supposed to mean to you. Isn't that right? Now Joshua had to divide the land. What if he liked the tribe of God better than the tribe of Benjamin? The tribe of Ephraim. What if he liked the tribe of Joseph better than Judah? He didn't do it that way. He divided it according to the word revealed by the Spirit. He divided it according to tribe. And notice he done it by revelation, by the discernment of God's Spirit. Each one of those Hebrew mothers giving birth to those babies called their name and each one of their name had a meaning Jacob when he was born being a twin she called him supplanter but when he got overcoming power his name was changed a prince isn't that right and when the, the great thing each one of those Hebrew mothers in their travailing and childbirth called their name out Reuben and placed him position in Palestine so the childbirth the travail brought out the name has to place them and before we leave here you have to be placed so it will take some travail to positionally place you it will take more than just a amen it will literally take a travail you must want your position you must desire your place in Christ we're not talking about a position in the church, a deacon, a elder, trustee, or some kind. We're not talking about that. That's easy. We're talking about place in Christ. Because in your place, you have faith. In your place, you have power. In your place, you are your anointed. In your place, you're not in anybody's business. You can't be jealous or envious of anybody. You are comfortable in your position because that is what God ordained for you. Mary, oh, this was good. Mary didn't wait for a feeling, you know. When the angels say, Hail Mary, highly favored, Lord is with thee. She knew the promises. All them virgins, all them sisters here in the promise, virgin shall conceive. Angel dropped down and hit Mary with a word of promise. She said, Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hallelujah. There was something in her ready to receive the word for the angel. She didn't wait to feel a sign, to have a sign of pregnancy or anything like that. No, she ran. To tell Elizabeth, I'm gonna have a baby. Angel said so. She had no feelings, no evidence, no witness, no test. Just the angel said she believed, and it was so. When she called the name Jesus, John and Elizabeth boom, jump up and ball hallelujah. That baby that wasn't moving along got quickened by the name of Jesus. When are we gonna come to that spot where you could receive the word from the angel? That your family is delivered your city is already taken already it's already given you just have to take it now when you go back home tell yourself it's a lie you're seeing everything negative is lies you believe what god said you're going to have that victory right in your house right in your home you don't want that victory nowhere else you're not running from your trial go take me out what kind of trial is that go back to luther day with that ask god to take it back to wesley ask for a transfer you know what God will say? Too late. All the bride members are taken up in those ages already. So if you go back now, you can't be bride. You're not going back. It's not time travel and space travel. You, know? you have to travel this way. Raptor travel. You're going forward. So God put you on the earth knowing that you have the gift and the ability to deal with the present challenge and circumstance. Stop complaining. Start to begin to praise and worship God. Things might be bad, but it could have been worse. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I told my wife the other morning, I said, Anne Marie, I'm alive. Thank you, Lord. You wouldn't want to wake up dead, you know. <laughs> you can't wake up dead, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but you wake up and you say, I'm alive. You could raise your hands. You could praise God. You're still in the land of the living. You still could give the devil a whack. You still could anoint prayer in the morning and faith in the morning. When you're tired, pray. You pray, forget about yourself. You pray for your children. You pray for your family. You pray for believers. You pray for people you now see for the first time and you're asking God blessing upon them. You pray that God do something. Praise God in your life. God send a revival. You want a hunger in your spirit. You want a thirst in your soul. Oh, glory. That's a great thing, you know. As the heart pant after the water broke, so my soul thirst after the living God. Oh, it's a glorious thing to know after 30, 50 years, you're still thirsting for God. That's how I feel this morning. Hungry for God. My God, I'm about to get started. I ain't get started yet. Praise God. I'm striving, trying to get started. One of these days, we're going to get this thing turning. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I hope I could get turning before I get too old. So, Brother Ram says, Ruben means sheep herder. Ruben means sheep herder. God means cattle raiser. That's the name. Ephraim means corn raiser. So, this one gone position in land here. And that land good for raising corn. He's a corn specialist. This one here raising cattle. Cattle specialist. Isn't that right? That other one, sheep herder. Now watch. A beautiful type today of what we need a Joshua for today. The trouble today, when we come into the promised land, God wants to raise sheep like Ephraim. And, 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 and God is a cattleman. But he find Ephraim sheep looking real nice. Every man... One wants to raise something like the other. Every man wants this to be the same. Let God give one man a gift of healing. Every man wants a gift of healing. If you man God, all of them wants to mix all up and come as one. But we are divided in our positions. Hallelujah. That's why all the attempts to bring unity and unity has failed. Because unity is not coming that way. It's not unity. It's unity of defeat. Hallelujah. And defeat is personal. It don't have a general faith. We faith. It's defeat. And defeat is Christ in you. Amen. That's what Peter had. Glory. That's why in the book of Acts, nobody asks for bishop permission like how the evangelist Philip leave the whole uh, 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 program and go to each other. You knock. He asked, uh, Bishop, please, could I leave now? He was translated to minister to that man. Nobody signed up to say, well, oh, should I? Should I? Stephen, I had to ask a question. Um, you think I should preach to them, them rascals out there? Stephen, but you stiff neck and I'm circumcised of heart. He was a deacon. Yes, yes, yes. He didn't get a sign a certificate of preaching. He gave it out. That was the book of Acts. Alleluia. Men of God speaking the word and they being led and directed by God. When Paul shipwrecked, he didn't say, I am not supposed to have a shipwreck because I am Paul. I am the apostle. I am prophet Paul. It happened. And he had to deal with it. Isn't that right? Yeah. Oh, praise God. So we don't all have gift of wisdom. We don't all prophesy. We don't all speak with tongues. We are not all the same. God gives people separate gifts and talents and so on. Isn't that right? Oh, glory to God. So the east side, praise God, was Judah. Isn't that right? He said, watch the Ten Commandments on the west side. Praise God, Ephraim. Praise be to Jesus. Dan was the north side. Judah was the east side. The south was Reuben. And the, uh, the west was Ephraim. And that represented north side. Dan was the eagle. Judah, the east, represented the lion. The south, Reuben, represented the man. And Ephraim represented the ox. And that is what was in the book of Revelation, the four beasts. Face like a man. Face like an ox, face like an eagle, face like a man. And they were guarding the throne. Amen. They were around the throne. That's how God put them on the earth. The tribes guarding the ark. Just placed, just as it was in heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. 
Isn't that something else? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go. They were God in the mercy seat, and here's why. Praise God. But the man even went and says that the same thing apply. He was running around because he said Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they guard the book of Acts. Here come the man again, the eagle, the ox. Praise God. And the lion. Isn't that right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they guard the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Acts is what? The Acts of the Apostle is the Acts of the Holy Ghost in the Apostle. When the Holy Ghost gets into the church, it's not big me and little you. It's still we all come into the unity of the faith, into the knowledge of the Son of God, into the statue of a perfect man. So it's not some preacher up there, some, 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 some high up somewhere, and the people down there low, 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 and you have to send some trippings to them, you know what I mean? Like, like manna. No, 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 no. The veil is rent, and you have access to that manner you have access to that blessing you have access oh do you believe that praise the name of the lord hallelujah praise god thank you jesus so brother Bam was praying he said let us pray heavenly father i pray that you will help this audience help me i help this audience no matter how much i would believe they have got to believe too cause here we go it's their faith that operates your presence that gets from you whatsoever they desire okay I'm gonna wrap up Wow I'm only halfway through so it's see all right so here what he said you went he's praying he's praying listen to his prayer you went to your own country full without measure the fullness of the Godhead bodily and men and women didn't believe you he is uneducated where did he get his schooling where did he come from where does wisdom come from isn't his father with us the carpenter his mother his brother and sister they all here and the bible said many mighty works he could not do because of their unbelief and that was the son of god the fullness in him and he was couldn't do much because of their unbelief hallelujah and you are the same yesterday today and forever god take all unbelief from us let us submit ourselves to the holy ghost and give a great climax to this meeting that every sick and afflicted person be healed granted in jesus name so it's very important that you understand the atmosphere and the faith that god require of you in going forward listen to this i cannot do it no minister can do it it takes all of us together in prayer and believing, trust in God to see the Holy Spirit continue to bless his people as you wait on his coming. Amen. Now a minister cannot bring a revival. There's no preacher that can bring a revival. He doesn't pack it with him. The only thing he can do is be loyal to God and his word and the revival has to come by the people Amen. in your home Amen. in your life. Amen. Oh glory to God. Revival come by. Amen. Say it out. Amen. Say it again. The revival has to come by the people. That means the people have to catch something. You have to see something. You have to believe something. That it belongs to you. It's yours. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Brandon from True Sign Overlook. He said, when atomic bombs and people are scared in the Pentagon, it's time for Elijah to rise on the scene. Here we go. Let the people, let that little flock, that little remnant that God will give him, let that little remnant go to calling out to God and watch what happens. There'll be a national showdown. There'll be a power that they have never seen before. The trouble of it is, it'll be too late then. The doors will be closed. Remember, we are the end time prey. He prophesied that the little flock, the little remnant that God going to give, that Elijah going to go to calling upon God, the prayers of the saints, when the church, when that little flock, when that little remnant go to calling upon God, it will be a national showdown. Oh, glory to God, something going to move upon the people to push them to call upon God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait till that flock begin to call upon God. Then he said, wait till them seven thunders utter their voices to that group who can really take the word and hand it there. It will slice and cut. They can shut the heavens. They can do whatever they want to do. Oh, glory to God. The thunders, yes, when they call upon God. Oh, glory to God. Do you believe that? 
Oh brother, give me a church full of the Holy Ghost. God will do in one year what all theology failed to do in 2,000 years. You wait till the anointing of the church really strike home to that little remnant. After the doors of the Gentile is closed, God will anoint the church then. Oh, hallelujah. He was filthy, be filthy still. He was righteous, righteous still. God will anoint the church with the power of God and things will be taking place. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Amen. How many believe that? Amen. The doors of the Gentiles will be closed. God going to anoint the church with power. Amen. I cast up now. I'm in the middle of something. But if I'm praying in a contest, listen to this prayer. Raise up mighty men. Raise up mighty warriors of the faith. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was his prayer. The prophet is gone. Where are those mighty men? Where are those warriors of the faith? When Daniel prophesied, the people that know their God shall do great exploits. Not just read books and tapes. Not just be in a message. No, do great exploits. Exploits of faith. The sixth sense and demonstration. Come on now. We're not preaching word only. We're preaching this power and demonstration of the gospel. What God is waiting for? God is trying to place his church in position to manifest himself. Get in one he can walk through and say, There is my spirit flowing freely. I can work here. I can place him. Get another one. Maybe he could start. Maybe he could start here. Maybe he could start today. That God could place one. That God could say, I could send my spirit. My spirit can flow freely. Unhindered channel. No politics. No sin. No unbelief. Just a pipe. That the spirit can flow through. Glory to God. Glory. So whenever God express himself by the word, how the word, listen, if it's a hybrid, the word gets short. The spirit gets short-circuited. So the current can't flow. Because some creed or some dogma. Go trying to send the current and it zzz, current can't go through. Blow the fuse. But when the current is flowing freely, the word of God expresses itself. That's why when the word becomes flesh, the invisible becomes visible. So don't tell me there is no God. We had to say there is a lack of surrender to God. Because any man surrendered to God, a man fully surrendered to God, the prophet says omnipotent. I'll say it again. A man fully surrendered to God is omnipotent. I'll say it again. A man fully surrendered to God have more than talk. Man fully surrendered to God is omnipotent. My God. Do you see how powerful that is? Elijah walk out there and say not even dew or rain will fall till I call for it. And he shut the heavens up. Omnipotent speaking. Hallelujah. A man words have an effect on nature. That's the power we're talking about. Before the doctor's hand touches my wife, the tumor will go down. Order the tumor to go down. Serve the tumor notice. Sentence the tumor. Hallelujah. God class. Higher DNA. Super race. Before the doctor's hand touches my wife, the tumor big like a grapefruit, showing true address, but a word spoken. Going past through time, going past through space. This is beyond science. There's no explanation for that. Fish dilating in the water, little fishy eye give you back your life. I, as a son, as a super son, I, as a DNA gene of God, I give you back your life. I have the authority. I have life in me. I can relieve life inside of you. Oh, glory to God, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I could give a fish. And if God could bring back an old fish, give back, what about you sitting here this morning? Don't tell me God can't break you out. Don't 
complain about your husband, believe God to deliver him. Complaining about your wife, complaining about your family, complaining. When I saw you pray, desperate and cry, long tears coming from you, and cry and groan and, and groan and you can't sleep because you want an answer from God. You may be seated. There's a woman named Hannah. She couldn't have any children, and she groaned in the temple, groaning, and she had another sister terrorizing her. Yeah, I have no child, and this and that and that and that. So Hannah have pressure on both sides. Her own self, her own condition, her own depression, her own frustration, and plus a terrorist. In church! In church! But she went past that. She groaned. She travailed. Her mouth was just mumbling. The preacher, boxed in the eye, thought she was drunk. But she was groaning. And God heard her. God heard her. She told God, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. God give us Samuel. Oh, glory. Oh, my God. God give her a prophet. God bless her womb. And God give her a prophet. She said, give my son, I'll give him back to you. Through her groanings, her travailing. God bless her with more than a son. God bless her with a prophet. That coming to boss Eli. A prophet. A baby. That's going to bring judgment. Ah. God not playing. But Abraham said, these men, if they pick up this and go out with it, they can make more sense to it and bring it to a place. I just want to lay this seed and then hope it come to life. Yes. I'm afraid men just making try to make more sense to it, but he didn't stop there. He said, I hope. In other words, make more sense to it, then what next? We hear more sense and more sense for 50 plus years. What about the other part? I hope they bring these seeds to life. Not just explanation. Not just talk, talkification. I know that's not a word. But to bring the seeds to life. That it could thunder. Because you have a thunder that shakes the devil. Did you hear what I said? It has something don't shake the devil at all in Devil is I'm not impressed. Oh my. Almost done. Thank you, Jesus. God will raise up a new system, an international system by the power of God. Isn't that right? By the power of God. He said, when the church gets a true revelation of the two spirits working within the framework of the Christian church and with God's spirit discern and withstand the antichrist spirit Satan will be powerless before let me tell you there's coming an hour where Satan going to be powerless 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 you walk into a sick room but the Ram says and the devil know the sickness know it have to go out right and you step into the room all them demons they're looking for the exit because a powered son come in there. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. You're walking in the spirit of power. Spirit of holiness. All the bells around you women. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. So they hold themselves in the upper room. Dry seeds. Oh, glory to God. And but I see him give a tremendous exhortation in permitting on, 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 on Tuesday night. Praise God. And I want to bring some little quotes from what he shared here. No one can look at what they see and be a Christian. No one can look at what they see and be a Christian. You have got to believe the things that are unseen. By faith you are healed. Not by sight. Not by feelings. The supernatural is what you do not see. But what you believe and act on through that. 
We become so conscious of looking at one another like this, but there's an unseen world greater than anything you can see. The unseen world is, is more real than this world. Because the world that came, came from things that do not appear. In other words, the seen world, a person had cancer, tumor, a person dying, but the unseen world saw that person healed. So the unseen world is greater than this world. And when you pull from the unseen world and bring it to this world, eyes pop open, deaf air, you pop open, dumb begin to speak. Because this unseen world is more real than this world. Because this unseen world could create a new world. Oh my, oh my. Didn't mean to keep it this long, but listen to this. In this world, man is continually getting worse. Choosing rather to walk by sight instead of by faith. Then when he does, he rubs the inner man, which is the soul, the eternal part of man. In this world, in this building, there are evil spirits and war. And Christians anointed and the angels of God encamp around them to energize them with faith. And here I am, standing here, yielding myself, and the Holy Spirit is moving. This is what you call heavenly places. So when you come to church, you come to be energized. When you praise somebody behind you not praising God, your anointing starts to sweep and, and be all around them. The whole armor of God is supernatural. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, and the Holy Ghost. All of that is unseen. Life, faith, joy, peace, all of that is unseen. Every arm of the believers looking at the unseen. The whole arm of God is supernatural. If you look at your crippled hand, if you look at your tumor, it will remain that way. Look away from that and look to the promise of God. Daniel was looking to the unseen when he went to the lion's den. The three Hebrew boys was going to the unseen when the fire fiery furnace. If you watch the fiery furnace, you go ball. Oh God! But when you look at the unseen, you say, my God, if my God will deliver, I'm still not going to bow down. I'm going to go as long as God is leading, I'm going to go. He's going to lead me up the mountain. He's going to lead me down the valley. He's going to lead me over the hill. Wherever he's going to go, he's going to lead me. Isn't that right? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sixth sense. That sense of faith is what made the Red Sea push back. That sixth sense raised the dead. By this sixth sense, mighty miracles are be performed. It's the most powerful force on earth. Your fifth sense still lays within your brain, but your sixth sense lays in your heart. Your five senses lays in your brains, but this sixth sense, come on, give the Lord a shout. You're almost done. That sixth sense lays inside your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Don't let no bitterness, don't let no envy and evil guard your heart. Because there is where that sixth sense got the thunder. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Because of the sixth sense, the lions couldn't eat Daniel. They couldn't get near him. Because that sixth sense was a super sense. That same sixth sense, the three boys was thrown in fiery furnace. And all reasoning could have proven that we would be burned to death. But that sixth sense stayed for two, three hours. It's that same sixth sense that have a Peter Paul laying in jail and they were going to behead him next day. But down in Mark's house, they had a prayer meeting and the sixth sense, here we go, begin to accumulate around the jail where he was covered by prayer. It was the prayers of the saints loosening the sixth sense and they create an atmosphere around the prison. They want to cut off Brother Peter's head next day. But the sixth sense of faith bust that prison open and loose Peter from that prison. And the devil want to cut off your head. But today we come to guarantee you and with the prayers of the saints praise God to raise you out of that atmosphere that you're in oh glory to God it was the sixth sense that raised Jesus from the dead after he laid in the ground he believed the word of God destroyed his body in three days I will raise it up but he is going down but I will raise it up because the sixth sense was built in oh give the Lord some praises people hallelujah 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 and the prophet said the sixth sense oh god pour it out on me give it to me give it to everyone who needs it pour thy sixth sense into me lord oh glory to god hallelujah i think that no church in this practice no matter how intellectual and fundamental it might be that church cannot strive until the supernatural is made known among the people and they see it. Amen. Just a four, two more quotes and we close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From a true sign overlook. 
and the torture man many wonders why would, would those things be necessary for a man to go through it's because talk about the prophets it's because people won't read the word and they won't pray so god is sovereign he sends his prophet to be a sign the people won't read they don't care to read they don't want to pray because they have other things to do they can't take time to pray and the bible is bothersome to them it hasn't got enough action for them these days god here we go wants his people to pray and when israel got so taxed in such a condition that they could not go any further their time was fulfilled and their burden lay further than they thought they begin to pray and when the people begin to pray then god begins to hear Hallelujah. it was time for the word of god to be fulfilled and amram and yoshibed saw it was time for god to be for word to be fulfilled they went to pray to god and usually those who pray is the one who got the burden and the one who gets something is who pray that's ordained of god to do so watch let them all break down the prejudice and say we'll all forget our creeds and catechism and everything else isn't it strange that god wants the people to have a part into it the prayers of the saints isn't it strange here why when jesus looked out to the harvest he said the harvest is ripe the laborers are few you pray the lord of the harvest that's what him you pray to me that i will send laborers into the harvest it is some part you have to do god here we go are you ready church is everybody up and alive god is waiting for his church to call on him everybody didn't hear that because i didn't hear anything i got a hundred percent amen god is waiting on his church to call on him he always did it god is waiting today for the people to call his servants into action the servant can't get into action until the people pray i'm not hearing you i'm not hearing you do you want the church do you want the servant of god to come into action then you have to have the prayers of the saints and there's a vial there's a container to hold your prayer it's like incense unto God. I'm close with this. Musician, look on, please. But Abraham, we're looking forward for a great time in the Lord with your prayers. I'm sure we'll do the best we can for the glory of God. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes death to life. Prayer changes sickness to health. Sinners to saints. It's prayer. You may laugh too much. You may shout too much, you may eat too much, but you will never pray too much. Amen. The Bible said, I would that man would pray. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Pray for me. Glory. God bless you. Oh, give him praise this, this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. How many appreciate the word today? How many appreciate the message this morning? Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. I want you to turn on and greet your brother. Turn on and greet your sister. Oh, it's coming down, down, down. It's coming down. Well, yes, the Spirit of the Lord is coming down. Oh, and when the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have His way, then the Spirit of the Lord is coming down. Well, it's coming down, 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 it's coming down. Spirit of the Lord is coming down. Oh, well, yes, the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way. Then the Spirit of the Lord is coming down. Oh, it's coming down, down. Oh, it's coming down. Oh, well, yes, the Spirit of the Lord is coming down. Oh, Begin to pray for the 
Jesus high Oh, lift Jesus high Oh, lift him up, lift him up For the world to see Oh, he set it high Be lifted up on high Well, I will draw all men unto me Father, may I bless them and provide for them. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it. Amen and amen. Say amen. Oh yeah. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Oh, let the church say So good, one more time. Just worship him in your own way this evening. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Let the church. Hallelujah. Say amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, every promise is true today. Just praise him. Lift up 
your hands. Worship him this evening. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him thanks. At the remembrance of his holiness. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him praise. Oh, give him praise. Give him praise. Praise him with your whole heart. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Give him praise. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it sounds good to see you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let the church say amen. Let the church Father, Lord, Lord, we're so privileged to be standing in this hour, Lord, Father, Lord, and to be blessed by what we've heard this morning, which we believe to be the word of God to our souls today. Lord, we thank you for your servant this morning, Lord. Now we brought the word, Lord, with such clarity, Lord, Father, Lord, bringing us out of the natural, Lord, into the supernatural, Father, showing us our place in the scripture, our place in Christ. Lord Father, unto adoption of oh, Father. 
Lord, are we so thankful this morning, Lord Father? Lord, that the silent period would not be forever, Lord God Father. But Lord, that the prayers of the saints could, could, could turn things around, oh God Father. That there's power in our prayer, Lord Father. Such precious words this morning, Lord, that were shared to us, Father. We pray, Lord, I would take root in our hearts today, Lord God. May you bless your servant this morning. Bless your pastor, brother, over it. Lord Father, we pray you strengthen him, anoint him, continue to inspire him. Give him a word in due season that he could, praise God, be a blessing to your people. Lord, until, until you're tired, until you come, Lord Father, we pray, continue to anoint your servants, Lord. Anoint your people, Lord, as we go and leave this place. Lord, be with us, Lord Father. Lord, go with each one. Bless their love, peace, Lord. Bless everything, oh God, Father. Bless this day. We give it over to you, Lord God. And Lord, may your word, more importantly, Father, Take root in the hearts of your believers tonight. Grant it, Almighty God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn on and greet your brother? Turn on and greet your sister. Amen. 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 Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. And even so, take your breath away. And how my soul longs to be with you, my God. In every season. Oh, even so, even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. We just like to ask Brother Stephen Kangley to come and just share a few closing words with us. Amen, so God bless you. Amen, God richly bless you, saints. Amen. amen, amen. What a service today, amen. amen. Can we give Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. amen, hallelujah. You know, sometimes you hear the word over and over again, but something special happens when it, it, it really clicks, you know, and something about over said today with regards to Job. And Job never asked for all the trouble that came in his life, but God wanted to prove that there was something in him Amen, that the devil can take away. Amen, and I feel that way this morning that no matter the situation is in our life, whatever we face with, that there's something in us. Amen, that the world didn't give it to us and the world cannot take it away. You feel that way? Yeah. Amen, glory. All right, well, I'm here just to make a few announcements. Um, service continues on Tuesday in Maraval at 7.30 and here at the Headstone Tabernacle in San Grande on Thursday at 7.30. Uh, maintenance group four, please meet with Brother Calvin after the service. Uh, there will be a short choir practice after the service, so choir members are, are asked to please be prompt. All right, so I was, I was told that it was really going to be quick and prompt. All right, and um, I'm also here to announce, please uh, don't forget to register for the, the church dinner. That's on December the 10th. All right, so what gets measured gets done, and we're just about halfway there. So we're still expecting you guys to turn out in your numbers to support us, to fellowship with one another. It's going to be a tremendous time. So you can please speak with Sister Abigail Nicholas. She'll be downstairs. So on your way out, speak with her. Um, put your names down and also make a contribution. That's $200 for adults, $100 for children, and children five and under are free. All right, so come out. It's a dinner and a appreciation ceremony for some of you among us. We just want to take some time to recognize the work that you have been doing and to appreciate one another. All right, so just to recap, service continues on Tuesday uh, at, in Maraval at 7.30, Thursday at Hesson Tabernacle in Sandy Grandi at 7.30 as well. Maintenance group four, please see uh, Brother Calvin after the service and there will be a short choir practice. Choir members are asked to be prompt for the choir practice and um, the youth dinner, all right, sorry, church dinner, it's hosted by the young people. So it's a way of us giving back and saying thank you. So we want to host that event. So it's on December the 10th, uh, the Heads on Tabernacle right here at 6 p.m. Adults 200, children 100 and five and under are free. Please see Sister Abigail Nicholas on your way out to give your name and your contribution. All right, so we're looking at the 27th. We'll be the youth dinner next week Sunday. We want to see 
as much as a uh, contribution that we could get by the 27th because we want to start preparing and putting things in place and we could only work with what we have. So we're encouraging guys to please come out and support. And again, it's going to be a wonderful night. All right, so thank you and may God richly bless you. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, as yes has come, amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come. Oh, even so, take your bride away. And how my soul longs to be with you, my God. So, come, Lord Jesus, come. Oh, and even so, oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. Oh, and even so, won't you take your bride away? How my soul. Longs to be with you, my God. Even so, even so, even so. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Oh, and even so.